So we got Matt Reif. Um, he actually has been done on the channel before. We actually did the MILF and Cookies reaction. Um, that was funny. So I decided to dive in deeper and go into one of his specials, okay? Uh, I want to know where Matt Reif is from. I don't think I asked you guys that on the last video. I also want to know if you ever met him or been to one of his shows. Um, this is going to be a three-parter, so make sure you guys check back for the other parts of the video. And without further ado, let's get right into Matt Reif Only Fans. Comment. Oh, you guys uh, ready to be offended? <laughs> So don't fucking say that and then go on Twitter afterwards like, oh, Matt has some opinions of his own and end my fucking career, okay? Just want to have a good time tonight, all right? Comedy almost isn't fun, okay? Right. Having to adhere to everybody's sensitivities. Since when? That shit is so new. Remember like three years ago when no one gave a fuck about how you felt? Like three years ago, if you were in public and we were like, I don't like, a stranger would come up and be like, shut up, bitch, and punch you in your chest. Like, ah, how I hurt on the outside and the inside. Ah. Uh, you should not be offended by any comedian at all. And if you are, just don't go to the show. Like, comedians are the reason why, like, people can laugh and don't have stress, bro. It's actually a stress reliever. Feel like, we've gotten so sensitive as He's a society, right. man. We have. We've gotten so soft. Like, fresh out the pool dick soft. That, <laughs> all the fellas understand that. You get out that cold water, you don't even recognize yourself anymore. You're like, whose dick is this? Who put a baby dick on me? <laughs> so I feel like we are, as a society, man, just on soft. <sighs> it's exhausting. Right, so I'm glad we could all come together for a night of laughter. It's good Thanks. to see y'all. Thank you. Black bro. people. <laughs> good to see y'all. Good to see White you, White people. Too. Sitting in the back. How's it feel? <laughs> this crowd you're work is crazy. I'm glad you're in a good mood. Did you say sorry today? <laughs> Did you say sorry to a black person today? Get your Venmo out right now. Cash out every black person in here. Five dollars. Get you through the rest of the show. We're gonna get these reparations one way or another. Okay. I'm sorry it took so long. I just got here. All right. Y'all gotta learn how to take Bitcoin or something. But we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Oh. White people have been so sorry in 2021, haven't they? Oh my God. It's been my favorite show to watch. Just white people trying to outwoke each other in front of black people. Because oh, it'll always start reasonable and then just gradually get out of hand. Like, white person number one will start low. Like, well, you know, I voted for Obama two times in a row. Like, All right, solid politics. Okay. Now, white person number two has to top Obama, so he's like, that's crazy. I was just talking about how Jesus was black. <laughs> Yo, is this true? Uh, yeah, well, walked on water, probably couldn't swim. All right, Caucasians, are y'all really sitting around seeing about who's more woke? Because uh, black people are doing that over here, too. I ain't going to lie. I just wanted to see if the Caucasians are doing it. Let me know in the comments. And actually, everybody's race. Let me know if your race is, like, trying to compete on who's woke. That's, like, interesting. So I think that's a little weird. A little weird. But anyway. Just white people trying to outwoke each other in front of black people. Because it'll always start reasonable and then just gradually get out of hand. Like white person number one will start low. Like, well, you know, I voted for Obama two times in a row. <laughs> You're like, all right, solid politics. Okay. Now white person number two has to top Obama. So he's like, that's crazy. I was just talking about how Jesus was black. <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, walked on water, probably couldn't swim. <laughs> Check out. Now white person number three is going to top Obama and black Jesus. He's panicking. He says some ignorant shit like, well, Medea is my favorite franchise. You're like, gotcha, liar. Like, Medea is nobody's favorite franchise. Not even black people's. <laughs> yeah, you're a reacher. I think I go Soul Plane, then Medea movies. Uh, God. <laughs> Ugh, it's all this white guilt. <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> it's starting to feel like alcoholism a little bit. And like every room I enter is like an AA meeting where I gotta plead my case. It's like I have to enter every situation like, hey guys, my name is Matt. Just wanna introduce myself, let you know I do identify as a straight white male. And everybody's like, boo. <laughs> so like, I know, I know, I'm trash, but I would. I would really appreciate it if you use my proper pronoun, the problem. <laughs> yeah, I like that. 
Yeah, if y'all had your own perfect pronoun, what would it be? What an uncomfortable time to be a straight white male. <laughs> it's a tough time for my people. <laughs> for once, you know, it's, you gotta know when to fold them. You know what I mean? We stay in the game too long. We can't be doing that. Coming back to haunt us hard. Rightfully so. It's just uncomfortable because to be a straight white male in 2021, you're kind of guilty by association, aren't you? Which is a shitty place to be if you didn't do anything. <laughs> like, I just turned 25. I just got here, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't do anything. I'm a new white, like, give me a chance. <laughs> new white. Give me a chance to wipe my wrongs, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just wanna sing along to some songs, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> wipe your wrongs. Just give me a chance. It wasn't, it's not my fault. It's not like I made the conscious decision to be born a straight white male. I probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> Historically speaking, why not be on a winning team? You know what I mean? But I didn't get to choose. It wasn't my decision. Therefore, I can't, I can't apologize for it. That'd be weird. And, and you don't have to. That's the thing. You don't have to apologize for it. Just be a decent fucking human being. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the sound of white guilt. Oh, <laughs> music to my ears. Don't have to apologize for it, and I and I won't. I'll apologize for being born a straight white male when LeBron James apologizes for being six foot nine. <laughs> Didn't choose this life; just happened to be born that way, right? And they both have their own set of perks, don't they? Like, sure, he can do a fucking windmill 360 dunk, and I can raise my voice to the police. So it's, it's a give and a take, you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to yam on a motherfucker, but I guess I'll just get out of this ticket. <laughs> gotta choose your superpower, man. Life ain't fair for everybody, okay? Make white people uncomfortable. Check. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy to be shooting this in LA. I love LA. Yeah. Uh, I love it because I'm not from here. So I have perspective. Um, I'm actually from Ohio. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Man, that's that, that felt that. as welcoming as it should have. Man, if you've never been to Ohio, you, you don't got them. You absolutely don't. I don't care who died there, send an email, okay? You do not have to go. It's so trash, oh my God. I'm not even from like a fun part of Ohio. I didn't get like Cleveland or Cincinnati, nothing fun. I'm from the middle of nowhere, like our west of Columbus, surrounded by cornfields, country, the sticks, we call it. Population like 1,500 people. Like the kind of small town where like the gas station's also the grocery store. You know what I mean? Fuck around, get some sandwiches and some diesel. You here? Why not save a trip? My hometown was so country, man. We used to have, uh, we used to have drive your tractor to school day. Wow. I swear to God. Do you guys remember school spirit week? Well, like every day of the week would have a theme to it, like pajama day or twin day. We would have one day in that week when like the rich kids would pull up and just fucking flex on us, John Deere style. And the women in my school would just get wet. Like, oh my Lord, he's got land. Cause that's all people cared about where I was from was fucking farming. Like you didn't need eight inches if you had eight acres. Like that was. <laughs> Is that the truth? That's how y'all living out there? Because I didn't know that. Like, I, well, I would imagine that, obviously, if you live around whatever your culture is around, that's what you're going to be around. But the farming culture, you would, I, I, I guess I never thought about what actually goes on. Like, you know, how do you get a woman that's into, you know, a far, that's a farmer? Like, do you have to farm as well? Or you have to understand the whole farm? I'm just asking. It's just a question. Need eight inches if you had eight acres. Like, that was... All you need is game, but anyway. That was the biggest flex you could come with. You couldn't compete with a farmer. If he's plowing land, he could plow your bitch, straight up. Like, there's just nothing you could do. Nothing you could do. But it's the type of small town where, like, life just kind of dissipates. You know what I mean? Like, everyone lives the exact same life timeline. Like, you, you, you go to high school, you get pregnant. <laughs> Then you graduate, maybe. And then you get a job, get married, and so on and so forth. Then you die in this hometown. It's depressing. There's nothing to do. 
There's nothing to do for fun there. Everybody just drinks and does drugs. But not cool like we do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Theirs is because they're sad. <laughs> so depressing, man. I didn't realize drugs were as big of a problem when I was living there. But apparently it's gotten worse. Um, I found out about three or four weeks ago, this kid who I went to school with, he was like two grades older than me. We didn't know each other too well. There's only like 300 people in a school, so we kind of know each other. Found out like three or four weeks ago, this kid um, OD'd from heroin in this town at, at his job. The same job he got when we were in high school. He lived and died there. And obviously the whole town got together and they mourned the loss of their dealer. <laughs> No, guys, don't get weird, okay? There was, no, there's a silver lining moment. The whole town, I swear to God, they started to go fund me and they raised enough money so that they could get him a memorial bench at his favorite park, which I thought was a really sweet memento, you know, to provide other people seating to do their heroin. Oh, no. I've never done heroin, but I imagine you want to sit down. Okay, whatever. You guys don't know him. Okay, I'm just giving you a little perspective. That I, I, I could have been a bench, okay? But I'm not. <laughs> I'm nothing like where I'm from. It's so weird. I'm good looking. I don't like it any more than you guys do, okay? This is not good for comedy, okay? And it's so weird for me. My looks are so confusing to me because you guys haven't known me my entire life, so you have no context of this, but... This shit just happened. <laughs> Puberty hit me so disrespectfully late. I was ugly as shit for the first 22 years of my life. I was so ugly for so long. If I would have been on Wayfair, they would have returned me immediately. Like, I was so <laughs> ugly. No, don't, oh, okay. I spent the first 22 years of my life building a personality for what? <laughs> You think I need to be funny now? No, it's a fucking waste of my time, to be honest. It's gotten me nowhere. <sighs> and, it, and it's so weird because when you spend so much of your life as one thing and then you're drastically changing to something else overnight, it fucks with you emotionally. Like I still, it's still so new to me that I don't quite grasp it. It doesn't, I don't see myself that way. Like I know I look like every fuck boy ever, but I do identify as an ugly person. So, um, I, I think that does technically make me trans. Um, trans handsome, transome. Uh, we wait till we get our bathrooms. There's gonna be all mirrors, bunch of pretty people doing cocaine. It's gonna be dope, and y'all can't come. <laughs> so, that was the beginning. Guys, I am gonna do a part two, or a part three. I don't know, just to see how it goes. I wanna see what you guys think about this first, though. Do you guys like this so far? Um, let me know, is this the type of dark humor that you guys are into? Let me know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions on other things I should react to, please let me know. Uh, we're at about 46,000 subs. I want to get up to a million subs. So make sure you guys hit that button. And without, uh, see you on the next one.